Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Woman tells of severe headache just before brother shot dead. A severe headache which befell Greenwich Town resident Brittany Thomas on Tuesday night close to 11 was just a precursor of tragedy circumstances which would see her mourning the shooting death of her brother O'Neill Chambers moments later. Chambers was killed by the police at the front of the yard on West Avenue while they were rushing to an adjoining community to respond to a shooting. They allegedly came up on a group of men who were behaving suspiciously, according to Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, who heads the St. Andrew Police Division in which Greenwich Town is located. Ricketts reported that when police attempted to accost the men, a number of them ran. It is alleged that one man, who remained on spot, pulled a firearm on the police party, forcing them to take cover. Shots were fired and Chambers was hit. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Ricketts stated that a 9mm pistol and a magazine containing a number of rounds were removed from the shooting scene. Thompson and other residents, however, gave a contrasting account to the police, claiming that Chambers had no gun and was killed in cold blood. Residents also claimed that the pistol, which had no magazine in it, was planted at the scene. In protest, the residents set fire to debris, blocking numerous sections of East Avenue, while some of them held placards and appeal for justice in the matter. When time him come in at the house, me head did a hurt me, and him come and say, me must take a pill and lay down. Him dead a so with me mother, say him want a piece of chicken, and she said two pieces left back in there. Me tell him to take the breast, ask him to take the chicken and go round there so, him get shot in a him head. My brother just cool, so me no know why them I said that to him. Everybody else run, but it looked like him stuck, so him could move, she said. The Independent Commission of Investigations in the com, which has started investigations into the incident, said the shooting occurred approximately 10.45 p.m. and that a Springfield pistol was taken from the scene. The firearm, along with the weapons of the police personnel involved in the shooting, were photographed, box sealed and sent for testing at the Government Forensics Laboratory. Police who were involved in the shooting were meanwhile served notices to furnish statements and attend the offices of Indicom to be interviewed. Indicom said it would be collecting statements from residents who had blocked the roads, expressing anger and reported a different version of events from what the police said happened in the death of Chambers. Alisa Morris Chambers' mother reported that she fainted when she was informed about her son's death. Morris said she was appalled by the actions of the cops. She said Chambers, her only son, had never been on the wrong side of the law pointing to a few times he was picked up by the police when dragnetting, but is usually released soon after. Them come call me round at my house, say my son dead. The way them come call me, me drop down because my foot them get weak. Them shot him in him belly and him vomit. Them not even did search him nor nothing. Him go down pan him knee and beg for mercy and then still kill him like a dog them a deal with. Them they drag him pan the road and throw him up in the back of the vehicle and a lick up him head and them something they like them na have no pickini, them wicked. One female resident, Nicola Ryman, claimed that the police pointed their firearm at her son after shooting Chambers, but he made a quick leap towards her to embrace her. The shot go through O'Neill and fly in a me bus. The mafi fix me minibus. My mother is seventy eight year old and right here so she live. Fizzy police a shoot man right in front of her. No traumatize them a traumatize my mother now. We need justice and them need to stop now, said Nicola as she lamented the trampling of her mint tree by police who were searching for guns. Man on the run after reportedly setting girlfriend her business ablaze. A woman is currently in hospital suffering from burn wounds after the man said to be her boyfriend allegedly dosed her with a flammable substance then set her ablaze yesterday on the St. James side of the Hanover St. James Great River Parish border. A bar and car wash reported operated by the woman was also set on fire. Reports are that around 5 p.m., the couple had an altercation at the business establishment when the man in a rage reported left and returned with the flammable substance which he alleged used to commit the grievous assault on the woman. It is further reported that the man took the time to set the business establishment ablaze before leaving the scene. The woman, who was engulfed by flames, managed to escape from the burning building with the assistance of residents who took her to the hospital where she underwent treatment. 
The incident follows a series of domestic violent disputes in western Jamaica in recent times. A little over a week ago, a 62-year-old man was charged with murder after he reportedly chopped to death his 29-year-old common-law wife following an altercation at their home in Trelawney. That attack follows an April 6 incident in which a man was seen on viral video physically assaulting a woman who is said to be his partner in Chester Castle, Hanover. While neither the man nor the woman have admitted or denied that they are the individuals on video, it is widely believed that the man is a member of Parliament for Westmoreland Central, George Wright, who had turned himself into the police for questioning. However, on April 16, the police ended its investigation into the alleged incident as a result of the unwillingness of the parties involved and potential witnesses to participate in the investigation, as well as the poor quality of the video recording. Elderly saint and man succumbs to crash injuries. 79-year-old Trevor Tracy of Party District St. Anne died of injuries he sustained in a motor vehicle collision along the Party Main Road in the parish on Monday, May 17. The police said Tracy was attempting to cross the roadway when he was hit by a Toyota Corolla motor car. The incident happened about 7.30 a.m. Tracy was taken to hospital where he succumbed to his injuries on Tuesday, May 18. The police said the driver of the motor car was warned for prosecution. Man shot dead before planned visit to see firstborn. 30-year-old Franz Booth, otherwise called Cheese, of Franklin Town, Kingston, had exciting plans to see for the first time his son who was born prematurely two weeks ago. But on Monday, a day before Franz had planned to visit his firstborn, who had been in intensive care unit, he was chased by two men aboard a motorcycle and was shot multiple times. He died on the scene. He was actually going to see the baby the next day, which was his day off for the first time because the baby was still in intensive care because he can't breathe on his own, his sister Francine Booth stated. Francine, who described her brother as easygoing, said she received the devastating news from a police officer shortly after her brother was murdered. I am currently working from home, so I was actually working when I got the call. The officer said he had some bad news for me. I was like, what is that? He said my brother's name and asked me if I know the person. I said yes and he said he was just shot and killed on Liverpool Street in Almond Town, she said. According to the police, about 4 p.m. on Monday, Franz, a porter at the Bustamante Hospital for Children, was riding a motorbike when he was attacked by two men aboard a motorcycle. The men opened gunfire at him and in an effort to elude his attackers, he turned onto Liverpool Street and ran into a premises where the men followed and continued firing at him. He received gunshot wounds to the upper back and collapsed and died on the spot. The shooters made good their escape, leaving behind a grey helmet, five 9mm live rounds, two 9mm spent shell casing, one blood sample and one swab sample from a bike helmet were retrieved from the scene, police stated. Francine, the younger sister, said that it is a hard blow for the family. We all took the news very hard as a family, but we are coping, she said. He's my older brother. There are four of us, but he is the oldest. As a family, we are trying to be there for each other and to support each other, she said. We live at the same place, and the last conversation I had with him was on Sunday. We share the same internet service, so we usually just pull together and pay the bill. So he was supposed to give me some money the morning I saw him. I was going towards him for the money, and he said he didn't have any money on him and he will let me get it soon. That was the last conversation we had, she recalled. Added Francine, he was a really cool, easygoing youth. He is very caring towards his friends and family. He is always eager to help out his friends and family. The Kingston East Police Division, up to May 19, recorded 28 murders, an increase of 56% when compared to the corresponding period last year. There have also been 30 shootings in the divisions, so far this year 14 more than the corresponding period last year. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.